Now, there's something else here, and that is reading your Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, that's something that we keep hearing it from Sunday school. We hear it all through our Christian lives that wake up in the morning, read your Bible, start the day afresh. But how much do you read your Bible, honestly? Now, you're saying that some once a week? Probably. On <laughs> that's Sundays. the average that on Sundays people read their I, Bibles? I remember. This, this may sound. That is. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I remember growing up and I probably mostly read the Bible. I, I think my, my dad was a pastor and I, he's probably listening now. So, but I, I would see if I could read through a whole book of the Bible while he was preaching on a sun, <laughs> Sunday morning. So while he was that preaching, that's when you read your Bible. I, I read a lot of the Bible. <laughs> was so. that a confession, David? <laughs> that was. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I'm sure he'll forgive you. Yeah. Now, reading the Bible is very important, you say, because it really represents a mirror. You know, it's, it's one of those mirrors, and this may, I, I joke about this, it's the only mirror you can look at that when you look at it, you mm. get better looking. Because, the only uh, mirror that you look in and you get better mm. looking, how can you go wrong with that? No, okay. it's quite a guarantee. Yes. And just to see, you know, it's, so, I, it's incredible how many people I've met, you know, they meet Jesus, and really their countenance changes, everything about them changes, and some, you know, God starts working on our hearts, and, you know, you become... A beautiful person. When you become like Christ, you're becoming more and more beautiful all the time. Wow. Now that, that is great news. Talk mm -hmm. about good news. I mean, we live in a generation too where youth is applauded, how you look yeah. when you look in the mirror. But this is one thing, reading your Bible where you get better looking as you get older. Yeah. Something you also say which is so important in your book and that is to be a good father, you have to be a good son. What do you mean by that, David? Well, in looking at Jesus' life, there's so, so much what he did. He said, I don't do anything that I don't hear the Father doing or saying. And, I don't, and sometimes we think leading is about uh, you know, being on, on top. And Jesus led by listening and following. And um, sometimes we want to be in charge of so many things, but we don't want to be accountable to anybody. And so I don't think you can properly teach someone to follow if you're not willing to follow. And uh, so many people are trying to lead without you know, being willing to ever lay anything down themselves. They're asking people to do what they would never do. But there's great peace to be found in following God in a, in a way yeah. of discipleship. You know, I, I've been privileged. Like, if, I think if everyone could have something like this, I, uh, I was definitely not a perfect son. And um, I think I gave my parents a lot of heartache over the years. And, um, but I did have a father who said this to myself, my brother, and my sister. That, uh, and you'd say it publicly and um, privately too, that my prayer for my kids is that in their life that they're gonna uh, go places that I've never gone and God's gonna use them in ways that he's never used uh, myself and, and a whole bunch of things like that. And it's through those things, understanding that you have a father who blesses you, that now I can bless others with that. You know, that is very, very important what you just said, that we have a father in heaven. Mm -hmm that will bless us because I know there are those of you watching that will say, I didn't have that kind of a father. And we're running out of time, but I'd like you to give that message to those of us that are watching our audience. And they need that encouragement from you yeah. to see the father for who he is and to be that disciple. Give them a word of encouragement, David. Well, just the, to know and really understand that we do have a father who loves us so much and actually wants his best for us and that He's there no matter what, whether our earthly fathers have failed us or done ho however they are, but that He loves us and cares and actually wants us to succeed. And that prayer that Jesus spoke, that you will do greater things, that here's a God who created us but loves us enough that He wants us actually to succeed in life. It's yes. incredible. Wow, what encouraging words. Yes, He wants you to succeed. David, I want to thank you so much for coming our way. God bless you in your work. God bless.